it's Robbie today. I'm going to go over a question on how long did it take to get this many hummingbirds to start staying here and how I figured out how to keep them here. So I'm going to let you enjoy the hummingbirds and I'll talk on the inside so they'll all come back. So it's midday and they have plenty to eat in the garden, but they're going to keep coming back to check. It's about 80 degrees, but they'll come back here, get a quick feed and go into the flowers. And we've been kind of cloudy today, sun and cloud, it goes back and forth. I started like everybody else with one hummingbird. I put out a feeder and saw one and then there were two and then they were fighting. But you know, when I finally stepped back and decided to do some research and analyze them in the wild, I saw what they needed and I figured out what it was, was water and shelter and someplace to hide. So once I got the solar fountains in here and I started working with the kits and let me tell you something, I didn't even know what a solar fountain kit was. So when I saw it, I ordered it. I didn't know how it worked. I didn't even know how a fountain worked and found that it's so easy. You just put the panel out in the sunlight and drop the little pump in water. Once I started setting up fountains is when they started to really come in. Because if you hang up a feeder out in the open, what you're going to get is the hummingbirds that are either migrating or in the area and they're coming through to get a drink and then going back wherever they go. They're going to have favorite places that they want to hang out in and live in. What you want to do is you want them to live by you. You want them to know you. And so what they need is water. Now, if you bring in water where they can not only drink, but they can bathe because they get dirty, this is what starts the build. Because what you want are some females to come in, not just the males that are going around and beating each other up, but the females. You want them to stay around in the spring and start building their nests. Remember, they can have three nests in one year. Some can even do four, and that's two babies per nest. Guess where those babies are going to go? The odds are they're going to live where they were born, especially if there's food and water and shelter. So all you have to do is think about that as far as what you need. And you can do it on a balcony. You can do it on a terrace. You can do it anywhere because you can bring in some plants in flower pots. They don't have to be really big, but you want something that looks kind of like a tree so they can land in it, have branches where they can sit there and look around. The other thing they need is something bushy, something they can dart into. So if they did take a bath, they have some place to sit for a minute and dry off and clean their feathers. Now, once you analyze and decide how you're going to set that up, I think you're going to see big changes. And another thing is when you have feeders out, like you see here out my window, you've got to make sure they don't empty. That prevents fighting. And if everybody can live happily and come in and get a drink, they don't have to come in and test something and go, oh, it's empty. Oh, let me try the other feeder. Oh, that one's empty. That's when a panic starts. Think about it. They're just like people. It's like, oh my gosh, there's not enough food for me. But if they can land on a feeder, and they may change around because they like one better than another, if you don't have any of them empty, you don't create a panic, and that will help keep fighting from coming. Now, once you bring in a whole bunch... One little hummingbird, let's say one little rufous male, cannot fight two, three, five, ten hummingbirds. Because while he's off chasing one, others will come in. Eventually, he figures out it just doesn't work. So what you want to do is set up a couple hummingbird feeders. If you can, separate them in the beginning so they can't see one another. So if one is protecting it, he can be sitting in a tree somewhere. Bring in some water gets a solar fountain and you know a bowl a shallow bowl with some rocks will do good for a lot of birds but hummingbirds really do like running water because they like to have it wash over them because they get really dirty with pollen and nectar so they not only need water to drink but they bathe multiple times a day get some different flowers around because flowers always attract them even if it's not the flower that's got tons of pollen They'll still come and check out flowers. And even in some of the flowers like geraniums that don't have a lot of pollen, they still harbor little insects and they're eating what they can find hiding in there. They'll go into spider webs and pick out insects. If you can create food for them, basically a habitat that they want, and it doesn't take much, 
you can get them to stay. And once you get them to stay, you'll have a ton of hummingbirds like me too. And it only took about two to three years till we started building up large numbers. So we went from hundreds to thousands of hummingbirds that live here all year. I will say I always make my own homemade food, which is one cup of water and a quarter of cup of white granulated sugar. I do not buy hummingbird nectar. That's fine if you want to buy it. But if you are buying it, you're not getting any hummingbirds, why don't you try to make some and see if they like that better? It might be something they're used to. The feeders you see in the window are First Nature. There's two types. Walmart has an exclusive design where it's a very small slit so no bees or wasps can get in there. I prefer the one with the larger holes because during the spring and throughout the summer, we have Orioles that love to feed out of them. And I think the hummingbirds like the larger holes better, but I do swap them out when the bees start to bother the feeders. And once the bees go away, I put the other ones back. These are plastic and it works good for me. If you ever drop the feeder, you'll know that if you had a glass, it would smash to pieces. So that's all you need to know. If the simplest things can bring the hummingbirds in and can make them stay. When they stay, then they're happy They'll find places to build a nest in the spring and all through the summer. And then you'll have those babies that will build a nest and it will repeat on and on. And that's how you can end up with hundreds and thousands of hummingbirds like me. And don't forget, I now have to buy the sugar in 25 pound sacks at a time. Have a great day and don't forget to eat what you grow. Bye-bye.